Hi guys, we just shot a Facebook Live on how to shape flat rings. So we are working with aluminum and pewter, which are very soft and awesome to work with. Uh, we're gonna shape it first on one of these round barrel pliers and then get the final shape on a ring mandrel with a plastic mallet. Yeah, that's one. That looks so pretty. And pretty. it's comfortable, right? Oh, very comfy. <laughs> so remember, we shot this as a Facebook Live over on our Beachcation Facebook page, but we've edited it here for you so we can archive it. So just ignore if we're like talking to people with comments and all that, because content is great and we're going to teach you a lot. Yeah? Come check it out. Let's do it. Yeah. Today, we're going to take flat ring blanks and shape them into open back or wrap around rings. And we just released a little video on this over on our YouTube page if you want to go check that out. But we thought we'd do it live here so we can answer live questions and all that good stuff. All right, so here's a couple uh, that we have. I'm going to shape these here. This one up here is one of our pewter ones, which we're really excited about because it's got this cool shape in the middle and we might do some more designs like that. This and that will just be a basic uh, open back ring like this one exactly like that. We'll talk about that crystal in a sec. This one is the aluminum wrap around mm -hmm. and that'll end up wrapping around and looking like this. This is my daughter's name. It's so pretty and it looks so expensive. Yeah, it's it's very comfortable too because it's hypoallergenic, like almost no one's allergic to aluminum, are they? I think you're right. And or they couldn't fly in airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or And it's also really inexpensive and really light. Um, so this one with the peacock feathers is what we're going to do uh, to do the wraparound ring. So back to this guy right here. So this right here is just a crystal that we set with our crystal setter, which we happen to be out of stock right now, but they're coming in soon. It's a big flat circle stamp that you stamp really hard and it makes the perfect little indentation for a 2.6 millimeter flat back crystal and you glue it in there. And because it's sunk in, you can't like flick it out. There's no edge on there. So it stays really nicely. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out because I know one of you is going to ask about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, let's take a look at, here's another open back ring. And this is the basic size open back, super adjustable. Um, what you, let's go back to this one. I wouldn't open it much more than this. I've been wearing this one just to, sort of feel where the limits are and this is almost a little uncomfortable. Oh, okay. So like what happens is see how your skin kind of protrudes there and can kind of pinch and all that. I just think this is almost the limit of comfort. Uh, cl more clothes like that is super, super comfortable and not as, um, you know, weird looking mm -hmm. being all open like that. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to point that out. We're gonna work with these already finished, nice and tumbled. Um, soft ring blanks so that all you really need to do is shape them. Now, if the, let's say this one came out to be like this and it's a little more overlap than you want, then certainly you can cut the end. I would use a really heavy cutter like our Fat Daddy cutters. Cut it to what you want and file it so it matches this side. Super easy, super fast. Um, but what we didn't mention is our aluminum blanks are tumbled. They're deburred, so they're really, really soft. I love that. So no filing needed. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to make this from a bracelet blank or something, sure. You could, again, cut it, file it on both sides. And if it's sharp on the edge, you just either tumble it or take a file or some sandpaper to it. And the pewter are like that too, rounded. You bet. Yeah. You and betcha. Angel had wondered if they come in different lengths. And they do come in different lengths. And on the product pages, you can see... Um, you know, it's maybe like six to eight for this length or eight to 10 for that length. It'll show between two inches and two and a half inches long. Yeah. So we have them in a range because, you know, this guy, let's say it bends up to this. Let's say this is a size six ring. You can pull it out a teeny bit. Then it's a seven, a teeny bit more, and it's an eight. So that's why we sell them in a certain size. And like Mel said in the description or the title, it'll tell you what length is good for what size ring. Mm -hmm. But all these are adjustable, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, should we get to it? Any other questions, Laura, that you see? Um, I think you just answered Marla's question about um, are the ring size so that they have a very small gap. So I think we just covered right. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Awesome. Okay, so this is one of our wider aluminum ones, and I just stamped like almost every arrow that we have. It's kind of fun. And because this is so wide, one thing you have to think about with rings is when you stamp all over it, sometimes it grows the length. 
Mm -hmm. um, this really didn't grow it so much because it's so thick, the metal went down rather than out, if oh. that makes sense. Um, it didn't grow it enough that I need to maybe cut some off and file it. Hmm. That's different for sterling or finish rings, but for this, I, I was happy with that. All right, so this is how it goes. I'm going to start with the large wrap and top pliers, and they have three barrels that are round and a flat end that's protected with a little piece of tubing so that you don't mar up your wire. You can also use our new Myland uh, ring bending pliers here, but what I want is this round barrel. And the reason why is because it's, it's easier to shape these. I'm going to do it on the ring mandrel, but I want to get the ends curled first because getting that little end around on the ring mandrel is sometimes not super easy. Okay. So what I do is I form it right here on this part of the plier. And then if it's too small or whatever, I go ahead and shape it on the ring mandrel. So let's see what that looks like. I'll try it like this. Now, just like making a basic loop, which we covered two weeks ago, you want to hold that wire within the jaw of your pliers, none of it poking out. If it pokes out like that, you'll get a flat spot. Oh, right. So as much covered as possible, and I'm just going to push. Again, these are so soft that it's easy to do with your hand, and that gets that part curled around. I want to make sure I've got that. There we go. Then I'm going to go and do the other side. Okay, mm -hmm. so you could keep um, doing this on here until you get it round, but what I want to show you, I don't know why I have that bench block there, because I'm not using it today, <laughs> is I then go and put it on the ring mandrel, on the size that it fits, it looks like this is going to be around a size 6, and just pull it around with my hand, mm. because it's so soft. You could also be tapping it around with your hammer if you need to. And now, you want to use just the plastic mallet though? Yeah, for sure, good okay. point, yep because that will, any other hammer will mess it up. All right, I'm going to take it off just so you can see. So the shape isn't great mm -hmm. yet. It's pretty darn close, though. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it on my ring mandrel, and I'm going to find where I've got gaps. You see that gap right here mm -hmm. where the metal isn't snug up against the ring mandrel? That's where I'm going to tap to bring it down. Oh, that really did work. Yep. So I'm going to come around and check in the ring as I do it. If you hammer too much, you're going to be making it larger. All right, let's check the shape now. Ooh. Ooh. That looks good. <laughs> so this came out, you also, with something this wide, you also want to flip it and hammer on that end because you don't want to, it's a tapered mandrel, so you want to make sure you're doing it evenly on both sides. Mm, okay. So right now this, let's see, this came out to about a size eight and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a little gap there, so I could pull it up a little smaller and push it in to get it smaller. And then make sure that that made it about a seven. Oh, that really did change it. And the size is still good. What's happening here though is they're kind of off. Mm -hmm. So just like a jump ring, Rock I'm going to just pull it back. Mm -hmm. There we go. So if you aren't able to do that with your hands, you can grab it with maybe two nylon jaw pliers, but you don't want to grab it with a hard plier because you'll mar it up. Mm -hmm. Got it? But that's so good to know that if you're making a ring for a friend, that would actually work all the way from like an eight and a half to a seven. So yeah. you really, you I mean, I would space. recommend making it as small as you can. And then they can, they can open it up a little right, bit. Right, right. Like because making it bigger once you're at your show selling this or you've gifted it is going to be a little bit harder. Sure. Um, so the shape is great. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about this. At this point, I'm squeezing really hard. Nothing's happening. I would call this done. But if you felt like it was still too soft, I would just put it on the mandrel and hammer away. So what I'm doing is keeping it a little bit high, not too high, so I'm reshaping it. But if I do it too low and I accidentally hit at this angle, it's going to stretch it out and make it bigger. Mm. So you can put it down on here if you want. I just hold it in my hand and I put the uh, sandbag here just to hold it. Actually, when I'm not on camera, I hold it against my chest and I work from it that way. Mm. That's the way I do it. And then we're going to just... What do you think? I love it. Pretty straightforward. Let's see it on. Okay. 
Let's see what's it fit. There we go. Ooh, that looks really it's a pretty. Small for that one, but I can stretch it out just a teeny bit. I do love that. Now stretching it out a little bit, technically you're, it's not really round anymore. So mm -hmm. let's say you did want this ring to be um, bigger. Mm -hmm. I would either just, I like to spin it on my mandrel as I'm pulling it down. If that's not making a difference, you can take your nylon jaw plier and hit it. I mean, not your nylon jaw plier, nylon hammer. Hit it down. You see how it's already stretching? And then I would sort of oh, set it yeah. there. So now it's bigger it's much better. So you could have them all smaller, like you said, and then bring the ring mandrel and your mallet like to a show, and then if people mm -hmm. want it a little bit bigger. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Any but questions on that so far, guys? Andrea had asked, she must have come in a little bit late, or if they came in different lengths, and they do come in different lengths, Andrea. Yep, yep. And they can be sized slightly different lengths, too. Or so that's why sizes. we have a couple different lengths, even though it's sizable, you don't want to take one that a six all the way to a 10. Sure. Cause then it'll be like uh, really mm -hmm. open and, and not super comfortable. All right, so that's that guy. Here's my gift to you. Ooh la la. Happy anniversary. <laughs> okay, so the, <laughs> here's the one that I used our two new peacock stamps on that I'm really excited about. Did I mention them? Um, I wanna show shaping this one because it goes about the same, pewter, super soft. But once you get to this round part, it's, it's wider and thicker, so it doesn't shape as easily as uh, the rest of the ring. So I'm going to start, don't forget this part, always go to that side because what happens, you'll get all the way around and then you have this flat part that's being difficult. So you may as well boss it around while you can. I'll just go all the way with this guy because I want to show you. So right here, it became a little difficult to shape that little round part because it's wider. Gina wanted to know if you did have to cut the end of it, what would you use? Would you use the fat daddy on this guy? Yeah, I'll show you. I happen to have that right here. All right, so I just wanted to show how you can go all the way with these guys, but this middle barrel is a little bit small, so that looks a little funky, right? But not bad at all. Yeah, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna put it on here, and again, find the high spots. So right now in that funky shape, it's only a six and a half, but you see all those high spots there? Mm -hmm. That has to be hammered down. So you'll see just with the first, tap it's already brought it down to a six see that high spot right there mm -hmm. Ooh, that's really loud I'll just hold it up hand strength is helpful and the round part looks pretty good but I'm gonna try to get it to bend a little bit that's a little bit better but see what's happened there oh yes like I meant to do it, but I didn't. Easily pulls back. Very cool. Yeah, so this side is almost done. I could just push that part down with my hand, but I'm gonna put it back on the ring mandrel and boss it into place. So this dude all the way, dude, maybe it's a chick. I think. <laughs> um, all the way put together is a, about an eight and a half. Mm, okay. I don't remember which one I grabbed or we carry this in a couple sizes, right? We do. Yes. So let's say that that was too big and you already stamped it. Let's just do something crazy here. And you're like, Oh no, what am I going to do? Let's, let's problem solve. Let's open it a little bit mm -hmm. and come in with the fat daddy cutters and cut a little bit off. So I cut off about a couple millimeters right there. And let's do the same on the other side. Oh, and Diane had asked if the aluminum um, was safe for your skin. Yeah. Um, or, or if it would if it would tarnish. And I don't, I haven't had any tarnishing problem. Um, the pewter I know can get a little bit less shiny, but you can shine it back up to what it, what it looks like now. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really tarnish too bad. Mm -hmm. So I just happen to have my file here. So really I might open it up a little bit. You don't want to be opening and closing, you know, the shape all day because you could snap it, but this is so soft that I've got a little bit of play. And do I have my nylon jaw pliers here? Here they are. What I can do with this very end, again, if you're just jumping on, we're problem solving. Let's say you wanted to make this smaller and you didn't realize it until you've shaped it. I'm going to squeeze with my nylon jaw pliers to flatten that bit out. It just makes it easier to work with. Oh, okay. Oh. I have to say that looked really easy for you to cut. 
Oh, it's super easy. Yeah, that's good. And I'm glad we weren't planning on doing this, so I'm so glad somebody asked. Yeah, no doubt. So I can take the file and round the edges here, but I'm gonna have to remove quite a bit of metal. So I'm gonna make it easier on myself and just cut a little bit of the edges off. I like that. You like easier? I do. Can't see very well. There we go. See that? Mm hmm. So you can see I'm already part way there. And then as I file, I'm pushing the file away from myself. And you can see the movement that I'm doing here. It's to get it to round. I don't want to just do that in this because I'll end up with a lot of flat spots. Could you also hit that maybe with a little chasing hammer on your ring mandrel too? Or you still want to file probably first? Um, what do you mean? Like the edges there to kind of soften them a little bit. Yeah, that would give it a different look though. It would right. give it the hammer look, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, this is a really harsh file, which I love for this step because it happens fast. But if I was actually sitting at my bench, I would take some sandpaper or a buffing stick or sand stick and soften it out a little bit. Diane, you were right. Vera had asked what size the circular pliers, the wrap and tap, and they were the large wrap and tap. Diane already answered. Way to go, Diane. <laughs> okay, so now that looks quite you good. could go back on the ring mandrel or you could try to round up the ends again. On the wrap, large wrap and tap. Yep, yep, you got it. And let's just bring the whole ring around with that medium barrel and see what happens. Not bad, not bad. Looks great. And let's see what size that one is. Well, it needs a little shaping because mm. it got a little tweaked. There's an airplane coming by. Better. Looks good. And now it looks like it's about a seven and a half. Mm. I don't remember what it was before. Eight, Eight and, and a half, half. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we sell the different sizes, but if you needed a specific size that's sort of in between or, you know, you could be, before we had these made in pewter, I was making these from cutting it from our bracelet blanks. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to do that and now pretty. I love it. With those pretty little, this is my anniversary gift. Oh, I figured it was either for you from or me. Laura. Oh, Laura. <laughs> there you go, Laura. I was All right. <laughs> so that, L for Laura. That's right. Here you go. Meant to do it. Um, <laughs> Okay, so that is the open back, but now let's do the wrap around. It's done very similar, but what we're going to do is when we go and we curl these ends, instead of holding the end, that is not the right plier, here we go. Instead of holding the end straight and perpendicular to the plier here, we're going to hold it at an angle. See that? Oh. So that when we turn the loop and it comes around, it's going to pass itself like a coil. Make sense? Yes. I'm gonna stay with this. It also, this works really well on this plier because you know, if you wanna get an extreme angle, you the can. The Myland, right? The Mylon, my, yes, Myland. <laughs> okay, um, so a little angle there. Or Milond. Milond. And just like before, mm -hmm. so you can see where it's going from top to bottom on my plier, mm -hmm. that's what you want. Do the same thing on the same, other side, same angle. Okay, so do you see that? How if I keep going, they're gonna pass each other? Oh, this one has a little secret message in I there. I love it. Forever. So I'm gonna shape it on here because it's so soft. I'm not able to hold this well because of the angle of the camera. Actually, let me do this. There we go. I'm gonna bring it around just with my hands. And look at that. Isn't that Yes. And you made it look so easy. Because I'm buffed. No, it's actually pretty, <laughs> it's pretty soft. If you are um, working with sterling or gold fill, like we're going to talk about next week, and that was not easy, you need to anneal it. You need to embrace annealing with the harder metals. So, so far so good. It's a little wonky shaped, but I can fix that. Okay. 
And I'm not being gentle with this hammer mm -hmm. because it's not going to mar it up. We have more questions about the materials tarnishing. Oh, we do. What's the question? Oh, do any of these metals tarnish? You know, the uh, pew these are all pewter and aluminum, and I think that um, pewter does, but not aluminum. Right. In my experience, I've never seen it tarnish. Pewter tarnishes, but a little. You want to grab a pro polish pad so we can show. Yeah. Like this has been sitting out for a little while, and I'll polish it up to show you if that's a pewter one. But anyway, look at the wraparound ring. Isn't that pretty? I wouldn't do anything more. I like it. And you know, whatever size you want. It's really overlapped right now, so I try to, again, make it small, but if you wanted it much bigger or you didn't want it to overlap as much, bring it down on the ring mandrel. Laura or, wants to know if she can use the nylon ring pliers. Yes, I think those would be great. Give it a try if that's what you have, for sure. So if you wanted to bring it down a little bit, just tap on it lightly and it's come down quite a bit. What do you think, Mel? It looks great. Can you make the wraparound ring without a tool? Um, what do you mean? Without a, which tool? Could, could you just wrap it around something round? It's funny you should say that because I've done that. I have done that before with, let's say, like a magic marker. Like a, oh, a yeah, really yeah. Thick, right, um, right. You know, those like smelly ones that are like orange and lemon and all that. I have done that. The smelly ones. Well, you know that, that your kids well, have. Well, let's, let's try it. You want to grab a Sharpie? I'll show you what's hard about it. So it ha the metal has to be crazy, crazy soft. But what's hard about it is getting these little ends to behave. Um, great question, though. I love this, man. We are doing some problem solving. This is pretty small. And will these work hard in? Yes, all metals work hardened. All metals have different um, hardnesses. These both come really dead soft, but they definitely will work hardened. And that's why you spend a little time not only sizing it on here, but hardening it so that it keeps its shape. Honestly, these are so big that, um, I mean, wide and thick that once you set it in the shape, it really, really stays. I'm loving them. This is the one I'm keeping. Yeah, that is really cute. Look how messy my hands are. This is kind of about the size I've done before on the marker, but yeah, I think to great. myself, if you don't have, if you're going to be making loops anyway, the large wrap and tap is a cool investment. Yeah. I but if you want to just try it, you know. So what I would do is, you know, let's just play with this one. You can really, the tricky part is that end, the ends. You can try to brace it on a table or something. That kind of worked. You are actually working a lot harder, like you're selling the tool. See for what me. happens? Yeah. <laughs> and then you might have to maybe maybe I guess you might do actually, it. Actually, well let me show you what I would do. I would put it on the table. Oh. And push down and roll it. There goes our sales. Now everybody's just gonna do it on I don't know. You guys See she was difference? she was really working hard. I mean if you were gonna do more than a couple rings, I don't think I would want to do that now. It's doable though. Yes, and what yes. we we really like to show you guys all the different ways to do it. Sure we sell tools. It'd be great if you bought tools. That's all dandy. But if you're able to do it another way, then great. Now, sure, sure. Now let's say you only had a ring mandrel, but you were able to do this on the pen. You can get those ends down oh, that's a good on idea. the ring mandrel really easily. Yeah, See that? that makes sense. I mean technically, yeah. You could hammer it on here. Oh, I don't know. That one be kind of hard. That might actually kind of hurt your it left might, hand. It might work. Yeah. But, but I think that could hurt your left hand a little bit too, don't you think? No? I don't know. I don't know. I don't Play know. with it, guys. We Play had a question with it. on your twisted bra um, bracelet. What gauge was... Twisted bracelet? The one that you're wearing. What gauge was, uh, was this guy? That is so pretty. Which one? This one? Yeah. I don't know. Aisha made that. It's square oh. wire. It's all kinds of... Ex awesome stuff going on here that Lovely. I would never attempt to make that. I just bought it from her. <laughs> <laughs> I traded with, I traded her with a bunch of stamps. Okay. So there you go. There is our wraparound rings. Lovely. Oh, can you yeah, set a stone in the, on the ends? Sure. Yeah. That'd be a really cool idea. Use a crystal setter just like we did in this one and hit it and glue a little crystal in there that'd be awesome you guys i even thought you could punch a little hole on the end and then wire wrap like a couple gemstone dangles would be kind of cute if you wanted to wear that part in front yeah 
Yeah, definitely. Knock yourself out. So what we were going to show is how um, pewter tarnishes a little bit. So I just, I'm hoping you'll be able to see sort of how it looks now. And then... Oh yeah, Can Diana you see said the difference. She, oh yeah, but not, but it still it tarnishes pretty well. Like I mean, I don't think it looks. I have a bracelet I haven't polished in like a good six months. But yeah, I think it still looks good. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. It's, so it's just like sterling, just like anything. The aluminum doesn't tarnish though. And leave us a comment. What's your guys' experience? Do you work a lot with aluminum? Have you had it tarnish or anything or pewter? Talk to me. Talk to me. Diana said she has a plastic uh, ring mandrel. That that would be fine to to tap on. Don't you think? Yeah. With a soft metal like this, um, if you're working with something really hard that's really challenging you, this, this guy's going to make a pretty big difference. But go for it. You know what? Use what you guys have. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go out and spend more money if you've got stuff that works. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, you guys.